How cool is that? These layers are just amazing. I do want to add some swoops. Definitely Christmas colors. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my studio. Let's do a ring pour tonight. So I've got this uh, silicone split cup, which I'm really excited to try. This is from Let's Resin. So they've got this four pack of split cups that has a, a two chamber cup, a three, a four, and a five. And I think they're all about eight ounces volume. So this is the four split cup, and I'm gonna be making a Christmas colored ring pour, which I might be doing some wrecking and modifying with this chopstick. We shall see. All right, so my colors, they're mixed pretty thick. I have this red, which I honestly don't remember if this is my blacrylic red or my apple barrel red, but it's mixed about one part paint to one part Floetrol. So you can see how thick that is. I really want these paints to stay nice and thick and the red and the green not to blend too much. So I've got red, then my white is also a mix of brands. I think it is Sargent and Apple Barrel, and then I also added some white house paint to also thicken it up and keep it from cracking. Then I've got, pretty sure this is Thalo Green. I'm using up leftovers from doing live classes and stuff where I just mixed up large amounts of various colors, which is why I'm like, uh, what brand was this? I don't know, it's a dark green. I believe this is Blicrylic Thalo Green though beautiful sort of Christmas color, Christmas tree color. And then I've got metallic gold, which I think is at least mostly from folk art. And that runs a little bit thinner, but those metallics always do. All right, so those are my colors. I've got my split cup. Uh, I've got a 12 by 12 inch canvas and I'm gonna be spinning it to stretch it. So I think that's all the details. Let's make a painting. I'm trying to decide exactly how to layer these up, and I don't know that it makes a huge difference, except I know that I don't want the red and the green directly next to each other. So I think I'm gonna put red in this side chamber. Boy, that is thick. It's really, really thick as it flows out from there. Hopefully I don't regret making it this thick. Um, green is going to go here. And then I think, I think I'm going to put the gold in between the red and the green. and then white over here on this far side. Great. And then I also have some sort of flow extender white paint which is the Sargent and Apple Barrel without the house paint added, and it's a little bit thinner than these paints are. So because eight ounces might not be quite enough to cover the entire canvas, this will help make sure that it stretches and covers. All right, so we're gonna do a ring pour. I sometimes have trouble with ring pours because I have a bit of a tremor in both of my hands, um, and sometimes that just uh, affects a ring pour, but we're gonna give it a go and Hope for something good. All right, let's do this. Mm -hmm. 
switching directions to get the colors mixed in a bit. Actually gonna spin the canvas a bit to get the colors to change sort of where they're located. Well, I'm losing a lot of the green, which is sad. It's still there, it's just tiny little layers instead of bigger layers. And I love the green, I wanted it to be prominent. But red and gold is pretty also. So I'm just really slowing down my center. When the paint stops, we'll skedaddle. It's not, whew, it was not wanting to stop. It kept the stream of paint kept on coming out. That's really pretty. That's definitely very Christmas. I don't know why the green disappeared so much, but the other colors are great. This is looking nice. Um, let me torch it a little bit. I'm gonna add some of this flow extender around the side. Okay, I'm not sure if I want to wreck this. Let me stretch it just a little bit and see what opens up, and then I will probably add some swoops and spirals. All right, let's spin. Okay, my center of the design is not centered in gravity. So I'm sliding it this way so that uh, more paint will flow out this direction. I should have caught that before I started spinning. Oh well, this is pretty. I definitely do want to add some swoops. Okay, well, I'm not quite sure what I would describe this pattern as. Swooping and swirling. I think it's cool. And so now we need to stretch the whole thing a bit more. Let me add here on these corners more of the flow extender paint just to make sure that there's plenty to cover the corners. Okay, let's spin it again. Very cool. I'm trying to see if, if my design has recentered itself. I think it has, which means I can slide it back to center. It doesn't need to be off center anymore. I don't mind a little bit of negative space in the corners, but I would love to stretch it just a little bit more. So here we go. Cool. 
So what's interesting is that some of these swoops come very close to the center and some of them don't. And I don't know if that feels unbalanced. I think I am going to do one swipe like straight through the middle because I like the center, but I don't know that I want that fine point right in there. <sighs> I have to do it facing the direction that's logical to me. I'm sorry. Okay, we're breaking new territory. We've crossed the center. That's cool. I'd love one more crossing, crossing swoop. Oh, that's cool. It's almost formed this little star pattern in the middle. And since this is Christmas, I would love a star pattern. Wouldn't that be great? So let me see if I can also... sort of trace it outwards. Okay, well, it's not exactly a star, but it's kind of star-like. And it wouldn't be a bad spot, honestly, to put, to like embellish a snowflake. So I like that. Let me torch one more time and maybe spin one more time and then we'll call it good. Now let's give it one more spin. Woo. I spun that one kind of fast. Oh, but this is nice because now the design is covering all the corners. Yeah. And I'm liking all these rich swooping patterns. Some of them in the middle are a little strange. Uh, it may be something where it's easiest to touch it up with a brush. I would love to layer a snowflake there, possibly a stencil, um, possibly just a hand painted. We'll see. But I think I'm satisfied for now, so let me give you a close up. All right, here we go. So this is pretty cool. Lots of twirling ribbons and stuff, and definitely Christmas colors. So this gold here is going to look so much better when you can see the shine. You can kind of see some of it right now, but when it's dry, it's going to be so much more sparkly. So that center is kind of star-shaped. I think if I layer a snowflake on top of that, it's going to look great. It's not perfect as it is right now, so I'll do something to the middle. But yeah, just really cool layers. And I love what just taking a uh, chopstick and swirling it through. It really adds a bunch of interest to what otherwise might be just a plain ring pour. All right, so I will show you how this looks when it is dry. I'm going to figure out what sort of embellishment I'm going to put in the middle. And uh, so, yeah, let's go to that next. All right, I'm back. So I've got a snowflake stencil here. But first I just want to show you how this looks. Isn't that crazy? The metallic gold, like you can see so much of the red and the green, but then when the gold catches the light, it's just like, bam. So that's wild. So I've got this snowflake, and I'm going to put that in the center. And then I have a couple other snowflake stencils here. So I think I may use this one and this one also to accentuate, but I'm going to start with the big one, make sure I can get that one done first and see how that looks before I add the other ones. So I'm going to do this uh, in Olga Sobe's style. So I'm going to use gloss gel sort of as the base. And then I have uh, pearlescence from Creative Inspirations. The, the tube broke, so it's in a container. So that's the color. So it's going to be this beautiful, shiny, pearl white paint. And then I have a couple of these 
chameleon mica powders, which I made dust over the top just to give it a little bit of extra sort of three dimensionality. So I'm going to start by sort of putting Yeah, I think I like this this angle for the snowflake. So first I need to tape the stencil down to the canvas to hold it firmly in place. Okay, let's start by adding a thin layer of gloss gel to our stencil. This is my first time trying this technique, so Olga makes it look easy. <laughs> we'll see how it actually goes. Just very gently swiping it across, trying not to squeeze it up underneath the stencil, but just apply it to the top. I believe the purpose of the gloss gel is sort of to create a barrier so that you don't have paint bleed through through your stencil because if a little bit of gloss gel gets underneath that's okay it dries clear um, and then the paint sort of sits on top of the, the gel. So next, I'm just going to put some of this pearlescent paint on and swipe that down. So there's the paint, layer of paint. I'm hoping it isn't too much paint. Like I said, this is the first time I've done this. And of course I'm adding something new. So I've got mint, which sort of shines green, and I've got um, olive, which sort of shines gold. So I think I'm going to brush on a little bit of each. I'm going to start with olive. So I'm just dipping a little brush into it. I'm going to tap that across the surface. All right, just a little bit of this mint. Now comes the exciting part and the tricky part. I'm going to lift up the stencil. Oh man, I can see it and you can't. Here it is. Whoa, look at that. That looks so awesome! I thought I had missed up this section, but I haven't. Fantastic! Alright, let me quickly um, get that stencil just covered in a wet paper towel while I continue to work so that it doesn't all harden up. Man, that looks really cool! And I think those extra sparkles are just going to, they're subtle, but I think they're going to be really cool. Let me just show you how that looks before I go.
go to the next one. Can you see that texture? It's really cool. Okay. So I have, because the, the middle of the design did end up slightly off center, instead of just having a single snowflake in the middle, I'm having, I'm gonna have two. No, what am I saying? I'm gonna have three. I'm gonna have two little ones. So there's gonna be a, a bigger one down here and a smaller one up here. So I need to trim my stencil just a little bit. All right, let's start this again. Okay, it's time to carefully lift this up. Ooh, very nice. That looks really cool. Let's see. Yeah, I love that. Okay, I think we're gonna add one more right here. So it's this little one right here in the corner. And it's going to be tricky to get this on without bumping into the first one or the second one. If you are wanting to do stencils and you're wanting to do multiple stencils, you can of course always wait until the first one has dried before you do the other ones. I just feel like doing it quickly. Okay, let's pull this up. Oh, that's so cute. That's nice. It would have been nice to have it a little bit closer in, but I just couldn't fit that in with the other stencil. So there's that one. Very cool. So I am not sure, you know, is this gonna be up? Is this gonna be up? I gotta figure out the orientation. But I really love this 3D textured snowflake design, and I will show you how it looks when it's all dry. So here we go, it's the next day. These stencils are completely dry. So the texture is just amazing. Now you can see a little bit there, for example, where I guess I didn't have quite enough paint. So the texture that's there is mostly the uh, from the gloss gel instead of the paint. This one came out perfectly. This one, that bottom lobe, it's like when it's shining, it looks perfect but when viewed from other angles, it looks a little transparent. Now, for a snowflake, I don't really mind because it's supposed to be ice crystals anyway, but um, definitely if you want a really solid effect, you could add a little bit more paint on top of that or just make sure that you have plenty of color. But I love this. I think that totally fixed the middle and turned this into a really fun, festive piece. So I am super happy with it. Thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know down in the comments, have you ever done a stencil pour like this? 
If you were to do a stencil pour in the middle of this painting, what would you have added instead? I hope this video inspired you to try something new. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!